Hey folks, it's Gikoskia here, and welcome back to Let's Replay Icewind Dale The Enhanced Edition. And when last we left off, we spoke with everyone in the inn, did a spot of looting, and we confronted Haley and found out some things about the area. We also need to find someone called Purvis. Haven't found Purvis yet, and we're not going to be throwing briar cones at him, despite what Haley wants us to do. We have a little more of the map still to fill in. We have this little area here that leads to nothing, so there's no way we can fill this part in. There's the edge of the map there, so we're not going to be doing anything over there. There's all the way over here, though, that we could check out. This is the uh, inn. I think we found every single store we're going to find, which is a shame, because I was really hoping to be able to buy a better bow. Hopefully we'll find a better bow as we go about our adventures here. Okay, what do we have? We have... a relatively big house here. We have... I need a drink. It's Digby! Hello, Digby. How you doing? Ugh, I think I had too much to drink last night. <laughs> what am I saying? There's no such thing, says my brothers. Who are you, anyway? I'm Magnus Bronzewell. Who are you? I'm Digby. I'm a trapper around these parts. Me and my brothers catch all sorts of varmints, skin them, and sell them. Of course, it's hard lately now that Emmerich's poking around. What do you know about Emmerich? Emmerich's nothing but a gutless crybaby who likes to poke his nose where it don't belong. He don't like us trapping in the woods. I think he likes animals a bit too much if you get my meaning. What do you know about Lonelywood and the Barbarian Threat? Uh, it's nice. Well, those barbarians send the animals this way. They run towards the lake and snap into the traps they go. Real nice. Well, Ready. Right he didn't seem especially hostile. Let's go and talk to the other two. They're probably in here. Yep, here's uh, Dolan and Dougal. Watch me. Hello, Dougal. Huh? Who are you? I'm Magnus Bronswell. Who are you? I'm Dougal. Me and my brothers are trappers around these parts. Why? Where do you trap? I'll trap wherever I damn well please. Next person who complains to me about it's gonna get a mouthful of knuckles. And that do good at Emmerich. What about Emmerich? Emmerich's this ranger who lives further towards the lake. He acts like he's a law around here. He's just a sniveling brat. Next time he messes with our traps, he'll regret it. Farewell, Dougal. Hmm, something bad's gonna happen to these two, I imagine. Digby says if we catch one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight more rabbits, we can have a party! Party! <laughs> Where do you catch rabbits? I catch rabbits in the forest. Sometimes you catch elk too, and some bears, sometimes. One time, I caught Dougal! <laughs> so funny! He didn't laugh though. What do your brothers do? They help with the rabbits. They drink the fire water too. They don't let me have it, though. If I do, they say I've become a crazy bastard. Farewell, Dolan. They have nothing to loot here. Okay. So, uh, I don't know why the map didn't open there, but uh, Easy as let's see if we can find someone else. We haven't found uh, Purvis yet. Probably find him if we head over to the east. Into this house we go. All right, this house seems pretty I large. We have nothing good here. We have ah, we have something yes, we can open. Right. We're totally going to open that. And if there's anybody around, they're probably in this room or upstairs. This house is pretty nice. You could hear the wind howling outside. All those plates. That's a lot of plates. Elixirs of health. Not gonna say no to healing. Hmm? Watch me go. And here we have someone. This is uh, Arden Thurlow. We must hire some servants. I beg your pardon, but I do not recall giving you leave to enter my home. I suggest you leave here at once, or I shall be forced to call my husband to deal with you. Your husband? Yes, my husband, Boldemar. I'll never forgive my father for marrying me to such a churlish lout. If he could only see the deplorable conditions I've been forced to endure as the wife of a second-rate businessman. 
You don't sound like you're happy here. Very perceptive of you. I'm a hapless victim of an arranged marriage. I never imagined my life would turn out this way. All alone in this wooden shack, married to a buffoon like Boldemar. I take it you don't get many guests. Hardly. Only the occasional boorish tradesman that shuffles in to beg my husband for business. Although we did have one guest stay with us several nights ago. Queer fellow, that one. Tell me about this guest. He was a southern gentleman, I believe. He was rather tall and fairly handsome. I remember he wore a patch over one eye. Yes, it didn't suit him at all. It made him seem somewhat roguish. Well, what was the purpose of his visit? I couldn't say. I hardly spoke more than two words with him. Boldemar ushered him up to his private study the moment he arrived. The two of them were up there all night talking, and then he was off the next morning. Where can we find your husband? Where he always is, upstairs in his study, scribbling in his ridiculous ledgers. Well, thank you. We'll I... go and speak to your husband, then. All? You didn't take my healing potions, did you? Nope! Didn't take those four healing potions. Wait, how do you know those four? Hey, okay. We need to find more stuff. And we need to find Boldemar so we can have a conversation with this man who very clearly is going to be a problem. Because he thinks he's amazing. And he's not amazing. Nothing here. I think we need to go into Ready. this room. I... And there he is! And there's a thing that we can open. Yes. Now, if you don't mind, I'm just going to pop over. This is quite a nice room, actually. I'm going to pop over here. I'm going to have a look and see if this is trapped, because it could be. Voldemar being a businessman, or supposed businessman, makes sense for him to trap this. Nope. Just a council letter. Hmm. Council letter. This official correspondence has been elegantly penned in ink and bears the official seal of the town of Targos. To Lonelywood Council Representative Thurlow. All is proceeding as planned. We have acquired the necessary talent for our venture. Once the final preparations have been made, our man will depart immediately for Lonelywood. Expect him to make contact very soon. Remember our discussion. There is much at stake and we are counting on your cooperation. Do not disappoint us, KT. Hey, you need me? Hmm. I gotcha. You have need me. I think we're going to have our I talky lead person away. lead the team. I see. Why, hello there. I heard there were strangers in town. Welcome. Boldemar Thurlow at your service. What sort of business brings you to Lonelywood? We are here We're here to prevent a war between the barbarian tribes and the ten towns. I see. Well, it certainly is reassuring to have a brave band of adventurers such as yourselves in town. If those hairy brutes do decide to attack Lonely Lonelywood, we need every sword we can to aid in the defence. We heard the barbarian camp is nearby. Do you know where it is? Camp, you say? Hmm. I'm afraid I don't know anything about that. Not surprising. What can you tell us about the barbarian threat? I can tell you the situation's grim. The barbarians have raised an army and are marching against the ten towns. Our town is cut off from aid and we can expect no reinforcements in the future. Let me ask about something else. Uh, we heard that... We heard about the one-eyed stranger that stayed as your guest recently. Is it true that he was a delegate sent by the Ten Towns? Why, yes, as a matter of fact, he was. He stopped here in Lonelywood on his way to the barbarian camp. As a town representative, I thought it was my duty to aid his mission by providing food and lodgings. You said he... You said the town's cut off from aid. How did he manage to get through to Lonelywood? That's a good question. To be honest, I haven't the slightest clue how he made it th through. He arrived alone, though. Perhaps he managed to slip by past the barbarians undetected. Or maybe he's not linked to the Ten Towns at all. Perhaps you said he was on his way to the barbarian camp. You told us you didn't know anything about a camp. Of course I knew about it. If my memory serves me, you specifically asked if I knew the location of the camp. I do not. The delegates did not share this information with me. Well, you were absolutely no help, but then I wasn't expecting you to be much help. Ah well, we'll leave you to your ledger, and we'll go check out the final place in town. I see. And the final place in town that I can see is, uh, over here. As you and then we'll head to the east and, uh, go into the woods. I don't see any other buildings. We can go that way to leave. Okay. Couple barrels, nothing interesting there. 
let us go and say hi to you. This is probably Haley's father's house, where he makes barrels. Or it's Purvis. Ah, looks like I met someone else. As you wish. You need a hole. You need a hole. I beg your, I beg your pardon. I digs a hole for you. I digs good, good and deep, so there's no stink. Maybe some other time. Right now, I'd like to ask you some questions. Questions? Oh no, nothing. Just dig holes. You need a hole. Have you received any sharp blows to the head recently? Huh? Never mind. Farewell. Well, there's Purvis. Watch out, someone's gonna throw some cones at you. So that's the Shrine to Waukee. That's the Ranger's cabin. Done. Ah, there's a house over here. This might be where Haney's father is. Yeah, this looks a lot like it. Northeast, by the forest. Yeah, this looks like a place. Yeah. Let's go look around. Anything in here? No, anything in here? No, there's something here. Aha! Gonna need a few days on making those kegs for Kieran. It's locked. Ooh, boots. Boots of the North. 50% cold resistance boots. I remember them from Baldur's Gate 2. I'll take these and I'll give them to, uh, I'll give them to you. There we go. Yes. Now we'll have a conversation. Hold on. I'll be with you in a moment. I just need to set my last piece here. What are you doing? I'm trying to set this loop, this hoop to the barrel before the metal cools, but the damn thing's stubborn. Ah, oh, there it goes. Now, name's done. Tybalt done. I haven't seen you around before. What do you want? Tybalt done, eh? I've met your wife. I've met my wife? What of her? I met her in the tavern. She seems troubled, and so deep in her cups that she could barely follow a conversation. She has not taken to life here in the north. It's been difficult for her. But enough of this. I have much work to finish before the morn. So if you are not come to trade... Um, I also ran across your daughter. Ah, damned girl. She was supposed to have been home hours ago to help with these casks. If you see her, tell her to come home, or it will be the birch stick for her. Why do you let your daughter run around telling tales? Let her? She's more willful than her mother. I barely have time to make ends meet, much less keep them both in line. But enough about my family. If there's nothing else you need, I have work to do. Uh, I might be in need of supplies. What is this place? It's my shop. I'm a cooper. I make barrels. Why? You with one of the caravans? Because if you are, then you've no business with me until you've traded words and gold with Voldemar. He's the one to speak to, not I. If you and I had business, why would I need to speak to Baldemar? Why? Because my business is Baldemar's business. He's the council representative of Lonelywood. What's being council representative have to do with you and I doing business? As council representative, Baldemar has taken it upon himself to represent all the tradesmen in Lonelywood in dealings with the caravans. A profitable position. I still see no reason why Baldemar should have taken such a role. Reason? There's no reason to it. He loves gold as much as any man. He saw an opportunity and took it. Could you get out from Baldemar's influence? Strike it out on your own? That would only serve to ruin me. The few contracts Baldemar tosses my way is all that keeps my family fed and the roof over our heads. The moment I raise my voice against Baldemar's generosity, he'll see to it that I never say, see another caravan contract again. Surely he wouldn't just cast you out. There must be room for bargaining. No, Baldemar prefers to settle matters quickly and quietly. He finds bargaining tiring, and in truth he's poor at it. But I don't... But don't take my word for it. The other representatives of the ten towns know it as well. What do you mean? When the towns heard of the troubles with the barbarians, they sent their own speaker to deal with the tribes, rather than chance a war at Baldemar, to Baldemar's diplomatic skills. I've heard of his speaker. When did he come to town? Not long before your arrival. He's a tall man, a southerner like yourself, wearing fine clothes and a patch over one eye. He stayed with Baldemar for a few nights, then left. At first I thought he was a merchant. But he spoke to none of the other tradesmen in town, including myself. Well, that would make sense. Could you tell anyone? Can you tell me anything about the barbarian threat? The barbarian threat? Yes. Rumor has it they're preparing for war. Their numbers are said to be great, much more than the ten towns can hope to defeat. If they fall upon us, the battle will be a short one. But enough about what might be. If there's nothing else you need, I have work to do. 
Well, nothing to stay. Farewell. I'll be doing Looks like the only place we can really go now is out of town. I... And here is the road that leads out of town. We could stay in the inn, but we're not going to. We're instead going to check out the woodland. And hopefully not perish. This is when we totally perish. Okay, we shall save and go. So, Barbarian Camp is right there. Well, that did not take very long to get to. I... That really did not take very long to get to. We just went straight there. I... Let's go in. You're not welcome here, Outlander. Away with you. I'm here to see your leader. Oh, hello. That's a lot of people. No one sees Will... Wilfdeen without good cause. What do you want of him? It is a private matter for his ears only. No one sees him unless I allow it. Now speak your business or away with you. I care not which. I'm a delegate from the Ten Towns. They wish to sue for peace. So the spineless fishmongers want peace, do they? I would hardly call them spineless because they have no taste for war. If they had any backbone, they'd stand before Wildfdeen themselves. Instead, they sent a stranger. How do you know I'm not from the Ten Towns? You look, you're bearing. You're no city dweller. Anyone with a keen eye can see that. I see. I'd like to see Wildfdeen. Very well. I'll take you before him. Come. Let's go! I was... Hoping that the rest of the party would come along, and they are very slowly. This is a big camp. I'm glad we don't have to fight all of you. Very glad. We wouldn't last very long. I announce Wolf Day. Blessed and guided by the spirit of Jared, once king of the tribe of the bear, now king of the tribe of the great worm. Hello. Son of Fengar the fearless, slayer of the dwarven spy in single combat with a single stroke of his plane, slayer of the great bear. Enough. Your words honor me, but they are wasted on these outlanders. They know nothing of our ways, and must surely find such things tedious. I would be honored to hear of your deeds, Wolf Dane. Then perhaps at another time you shall. For now, however, I would know why you have come before me. Your announcer said that you are blessed and guided by the spirit of Jared. What did he mean by that? The one known as Wolf Dane died and was laid to rest. As his spirit prepared to leave the shell of his body, he had a vision. Jared. The savior of old appeared before him. He asked that Wolfdane join with him. He said that together they could return the tribes to their former glory. It was an honor that Wolfdane could not refuse. I awoke that day. I am neither Wolfdane nor Jared, but both joined as one. It is through me that the tribes have come together, and through me, my people shall rule the north once more. Now, I want to know why you have come to me. Speak, Outlander. This is going to end well. I'm a delegate from the Ten Towns. They wish to sue for peace. I was not aware that our peoples were at war. Perhaps the fact that savages have gathered at your doorstep prompted your visit. With respect, Wolfdeen, the tribes have gathered and attacked the Ten Towns before. The people the Ten Towns wish to avoid any future confrontation. With respect? An interesting word for an outlander to use. Is this the same respect shown to us when the Ten Towns stole our lands? The Ten Towns are small and the Hunter is large. Surely there is room enough for all to coexist in peace. Room for all? Your civilization has spread across Faerun like a plague of locusts. To the east, west, and south, the land reeks with the stench of your cities. 
Here in the north, the land remained pure until your people discovered the fish of the lakes. Now your pestilence strikes here as well. What new discovery will lead your people even further into our lands? What other treasures will you steal from us? No, there will be no room for my people here. You will press on, driving us further north, until the land ends and the cold kills us. It is not the intention of the Ten Towns to drive your people away, Wolf Dean. So you say, Outlander, but you know nothing of what you speak. My people have already been driven far from their ancestral lands. One only needs to look at a map to see the truth of my words. Our tribes once roamed freely from the spine of the world in the south to the endless sea in the north. Now, we cannot travel south beyond Kelvin's Cairn without your leave. Fully half of our ancestral lands are denied us. I cannot deny your words, Wolf Dean. I can only ask that our two peoples find some common ground to build a foundation of peace upon. Well said, Outlander. So, what common ground should we build this foundation upon? Would trade suffice? No. We are a simple people, with nothing that you would find of value. Cultural ties, perhaps? No. We are nomadic in nature, and cannot abide the confining cities in which you thrive. Spiritually? No. Even now, our most holy site, Jared Stone, is denied to us. Sealed away beneath an Outlander temple. Outlander temple? Jared Stone lies beneath the Temple of Tempus. Is he not your deity as well? We worship Tempus, not Tempus. Your people have even gone so far as to change his name and deny us even that small link. It's only a name, Wolf Dean. He's still the same god, and he's still revered by both peoples. So you feel names and titles have no value, Outlander? To us, a name defines us as a people, and carries with it honor and respect. Yet you would dare to make light of it, even when a god's name is concerned. You insult us. Wolfdeen, I've tried to reason with you, but you persist in twisting my words. Is there no way we can bring peace between our people? If I believed you to be a delegate of the Ten Towns that you claim to be, then we could come to terms. However, you are not what you seem, Outlander. What do you mean? Look at you. Are armor and blades the trappings of a diplomat? I think not. It is more likely that you are an assassin sent to slay me, just like the last delegate sent by the Ten Towns. You will find his head outside my tent. I know nothing of an assassin, Wolf Dean. I questioned the assassin before he died, Outlander. The Council of the Ten Towns paid him, specifically the Lonelywood representative. I am not an assassin, Wolf Dean. Then you are a spy sent by the Ten Towns to learn of our strengths and weaknesses. In either case, I cannot let you leave this tent alive. This is going well. Stay your hand, mighty Wolfdane. These strangers bear our people no malice upon my oath. Hey, you've come to my aid. I know this, for it was I who bade them to appear before this council. I see. Tell me, Yoldair, why would you do such a thing? Their coming was foretold by a vision. I have been to the other side, great king. The spirits have shown me these heroes and other images that speak the will of Tempas. If Tempas has called these strangers to us, then surely we cannot dishonor ourselves by slaying them within the hallowed halls of Engoro. Very well. If it is the will of Tempas, then I will hear more of it. Tell me of your vision, Yolder. Why are these outlanders among our people? I... I do not know. The vision was unclear as to what purpose they must serve, but it must... Unclear? You dare to stand before me, speak the will of Tempas, and yet you are unclear as to what our Lord demands of us? How can you wear the mantle of a shaman if his voice does not ring true throughout your very being? I will hear nothing more from you, Yolder. You have failed your people and me. From this day forward, you shall be exiled to the burial isle. Contemplate your failure until you join with our ancestors. And now we have a reason to go there. As for these outlanders, 
I will not contest even the flawed vision of a shaman. If it is the will of Tempas that they live, then so be it. Remove them from my sight. Well, this has gone terribly. Hold, Outlander. You'll go no further than this. Wolf Dane has ordered your death, and I'm to see it done. Why has he ordered my death? I don't know. It's not my place to question Wolf Dane. The shaman killed him has banished the burial isle. What will happen to him? The burial isle is a bleak place. He'll either starve or the cold will kill him. Why can't he just leave the isle? The only way off the island is by boat, and there are none. Were he to try to swim the shore, the water's chill will surely kill him. Where's the burial isle located? It lies in the middle of a lake near Lonelywood. It's some distance from the shore and can only be reached by boat. Is it your place to question the visions of your shaman? They are the voice of Tempos. Through their visions we know his will. I do not question the will of Tempos. The shaman Hjoldir saw my vision coming in a vision. He says I'm destined for some greater purpose. Yes, I was at the audience where he spoke before Wolfdeen. If it is the will of Tempos that I serve a great purpose, then attacking me is a tantamount to defying him. Tempos is the lord of battles. Perhaps you are destined for some great purpose, and this battle is to test your mettle in his eyes. Let us see. To arms! So be it. Yay! Combat! We are in a bit of bother. But we should be alright. Okay. Let's get a haste going. And... No, let's get a haste going rather, sorry. Get this here. Yes. Get this here. Ready. Kill you with that. Kill you with this. Uh, we absolutely want a... Uh... Hmm, let's see. Ice Storm's not a good one. I'm gonna go with this. Okay, we got haste going. Defensive spin. I'm here. And we'll see how well what we do. Now I will show you Okay. We're not doing too badly here. Need to move you a little bit away. And what? Okay, you're gonna move over here. We're gonna fire off a magic missile. And another magic missile. Keep your way here. Keep moving away. And you're not doing badly here, but these enemies are hitting quite hard. Then again, your armor class is pretty good. So, as long as we keep you away. We can then fire more magic missiles, like so, and probably get a good kill in. One down! Okay. You should move over to here. You're all, yep, that's another one down. Finish off that one, please. If you would. I need you to fire another magic missile, and another magic missile. These people, by the way, not very well equipped. Another one down, and there's now only... Nope, you're gone. And soon, you're going to be gone too. Considering this was an ambush, we've done pretty well here. Yep, we did pretty well. And we're going to grab this, that, this, that. And when we come back, folks, we're going to have to go to the burial oh, yeah. aisle so that we can go and rescue our sage friend. Speak. And hopefully we can deal with all of the problems here without things getting worse. Oh, who am I kidding? Things are going to get worse. Quite a bit worse, I fear. And so, I'll catch you next time, folks. And I'll see you then. Later. We didn't do too badly against those foes, especially considering they caught us off guard. Fingers crossed we'll do better going forward. Later.